All right, we're back at the MWOD, and, and you're a little confused right now because you don't know where you are. Is this like some kind of UFO thing? Well, this is Brian McKenzie, and this is how he's managed to rig his outdoor trampoline. It's difficult to see, but I want you to know that flash pass is for night bouncing. So uh, this is part of the dreamland, uh, the evil lab, and I'm, uh, we're going we're gonna to take the idea of the evil lab a little bit further. But come on in. We're going to show you some kind of cool stuff tonight. So... Down visiting uh, Brian McKenzie, uh, you might might Hola. you might know him from such things as running. And um, what I want to show you tonight is uh, one of the things that Brian has in his gym, and this is called the uh, Speedboard by Woodway. This is a. Uh, we actually renamed it the Curve. It's it's named the Curve. Check. And what it's what's amazing about this is it's actually a treadmill that doesn't have a motor, and it turns out that the motor is you as you try to run uphill on this thing. So. What's cool about this, get my focus in there, is that uh, besides the kind of highly technical foot striking that it has to happen in the right way, you basically have a machine that will tell you whether or not you are breaking at the hip or not. And so it's one of the best devices I've ever seen to see a closed hip fault or when people are kind of leaning forward or collapsing and don't know what kind of midline stable is. You're going to jump on there, Brian, again? Yes, sir. Okay, so he's pulling, pulling up the ball up for the dog. So look, one of the things we have is just jog easy. He's straight up and down, and then in order to make this thing go, he's got to tilt forward. And that tilting is what sets him up. Okay, now watch this. If he leans forward at all, go slow down. Whoa, he breaks immediately and goes out the back, and that's a lot of the running positions we see. And the further he spins out the back, the, the, the worse the position he's in. Now watch this. Can you overextend for me? Classically, you'll notice that if he, Brian overextends, that he immediately can't turn the foot over as fast, and he doesn't end up in a good position. So let's get tight and neutral, Wink. and then he tilts the whole thing forward, and now he can actually uh, generate some force. Okay, how about that? That machine is amazing, and uh, if you are in a bad position, it'll just show you, because you either can't go anywhere, or two, uh, you can't generate any force, and if you break and lose that integrated falling position, then uh, you know, you're toast. And so we've been working on the three-minute hollow rock. We have someone from, um, from Steve's club who maybe has, has taken it, so we're, gonna, we're verifying those results right now for the three-minute hollow. Brian's out of breath, because he's a crappy endurance athlete, it turns out. He just did like one, uh, I don't know, 500 meter sprint and uh, he smoked. So here's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna talk about nine um, calories. Nine calories. <laughs> Check. It's all about calories burned. So tonight we're gonna talk about kind of common CrossFit problems. And one of the, uh, one of the or runner problems, and one of the things I hear all the time from my runners is that my psoas is tight. We hear the same thing from our professional dancers at SF Ballet. And I'm gonna hand this over to Bri. You got this for a second? Yeah. Let's get a light on there. Okay, we got another light on. Okay, so I'm gonna hand this over to Bri. And what ends up happening is, when we see athletes who are spending time in an extended position or running in an extended position, if they can't anchor that down and create a stable neutral trunk and continue to fall forward, then one of the things we do is try to shorten that leverage. Now I'm in an upright position. I don't have to exert any energy uh, because being in a tight position or falling is expensive. And so I break, and then as that leg extends, I'm just in an overextended position, that psoas gets tight. So we keep talking about this hollow position. It's the same hollow position we see squatting. It's the same hollow position that the ballet dancers are talking about. Same spinal position. Even though they're tucking under, it's the same position I squat in, right? So let's kind of get to the root, and I want to, I want to show you what we're going to do tonight. First things first, is we're going to talk about, the, I want you to smash your psoas again. So that time has come up where you need to take the evil ball, Five, lateral to your belly button, and I want you to cook, kind of cook that psoas on the floor. So remember, it's seppuku, it's not hereditary, harikai, and so I'm just going to roll back and forth, and I want to just kind of sandwich those things. Now remember, if your psoas is tight, there's something going on with your mechanics, and that should be pathognomonic or alarm for I'm overextended. But I want to show you a nice little variation on the thing. So sometimes I have a hard time because of my large chesticles for getting into that position. So look, ball, stomach, weight over the ball, oh, and I can drive that thing straight into my gut and, uh, and suffer a slow quiet death. So all I've done is taking that ball where I think my psoas is, and I'm just going to rub back and forth with a little bit of weight. If you're a man, I mean, this is only, what, 16 key, kg? It's plenty. And, uh, you know, don't black out because you'll wake up and you'll still be kind of mobilizing your psoas. Right? Angel. So, angel. That was for you, angel. So, uh, okay, so that's homework number one. But as we go and kind of start to solve this problem, what we usually see is that tight hips go with that, 
And so it's tight hips, broken psoas, and tight calf. And usually this sequela goes with it. So when I'm, when I'm solving an overextension problem, tight back problem with my athletes, uh, first thing I do is look downstream at the hip. Do I have enough room to open up? Second thing is, do I have enough room in the calf? So we're going to hit the problem area, which is the psoas, because that keeps pulling me into extension. I open up the hip, and then uh, we go ahead and hit the calf. So we're going to come to the calf in a second, because I want to show you something genius that Brian has done. We go ahead and hit the calf stretch, this piece, part of this piece. So psoas. Let's go ahead and wind up your calves on the wall or a ball or something. Here we go, perfect here. Let's go ahead and get a, uh, plenty of time in on the calf doing this tonight. Um, anytime I'm with Brian, he makes me run. It's part of the thing that I do. I suck at running, and so I'm always working on that, those positions. So let's go ahead and hit that. And then uh, we've got to open up the hip. And uh, I'm going to grab Brian again here real quick. And I want to have Brian lay on the stomach. The other night I had uh, testing with Juliet. And uh, remember that we just went ahead and pulled that knee to chest, right? I said I'd tie this in and, or, or he, heel the butt. And I should be able to easily get that heel to touch Brian's butt. And you'll notice that he's way, way, way far away. And it's not that he isn't conscious of this, but the compromise he makes by being a runner is that he's going to get short in those anterior tissues. So this is one of the things that I, as a runner, I can instantaneously work with my athletes of, hey, let's make sure that you are uh, got enough room here. And this is one of the patterns you're going to see with runners. Runners tend to be short in the hip. You'll notice that Brian keeps overextending his back a little bit. So as I pump his, his heel to his butt, he actually starts to feel that in his low back. And what you've done is, ah, uh, made the connection between, hey, tight anterior hip structures, right? Tight anterior hip starts to pull him into extension, so he's over-curving his back. And then because he over-curves his back, his psoas gets tight, and uh, it makes the whole thing worse, okay? So let's go ahead and get Brian into a, a good hip stretch. So what do you love for stretching the front of the hip, Brian? What do you do? <sighs> Couch stretch. Come on in. Let's go. Because this is going to set us up for, uh, oh, you're in the McKenzie layer now. This is going to set us up for some kind of deep, dark hell. Okay, so we're going to throw Brian up, and, and this is what I want to do. I want to show you Brian's goat. So I put Brian in the corner for the couch stretch, okay? Drops knee into the corner. He's going to start with his foot down, right? Go ahead and start with your foot down, Brian, because the other leg down. There you go. Now load that thing up, and now he gets a good load all the way to the corners, and then he's going to bring that first leg up into a high kneel, right? And I want you to see that the compromise that Brian makes right off the bat is that his knee flies out to the side, right? So what we have here is always thinking, you know, it's not that Brian's not aware of this, but that the running puts him into a position where habitually he's going to get tight. So we have him push his heel over or his butt over a little bit to the side, keeping that knee in line, and then have him, let's go ahead and cultivate a couple minutes. I'm really interested in driving that hip into the ground. So this is the place where Brian's really got to make his money trying to open up the hip. Chances are his distal quads are okay, and if he went ahead and went straight back all the way up to the wall, we would see that he can compensate a little bit, right? The foot, the foot. But uh, he's, still, he's still working hard. Oh, he's falling over. So remember, our goal is we can take really good athletes and find out where their problems are to make them more efficient, right? Brian doesn't have back pain. He doesn't have knee pain. Things are working out, but we're always finding out ways to get, go faster, okay? So we've got to spend some time on the couch stretch. Let's get on the psoas, and uh, we're going to stretch the calves. And I want to give you guys a special treat. I'm going to hand this back over to Brian. Now this, is, uh, this is deeply tickles me. This is sort of disturbing, and uh, I, I don't want you guys to be afraid of what is you're seeing here. So this is a, uh, a rigid um, fuego. Um, it's a uh, kind of what, what would you call this? Sawzall. Sawzall kind of saw. Brian took the dullest uh, knife blade that he could. He wrapped a little piece of wood around it, taped the whole thing, took a lacrosse ball, melted, stuck the whole thing, and taped it all together. You guys got that? It's pretty simple. And then he, uh, he sh shoves it in this thing. This The lock's in. So just twist and lock. Yeah, he twist it. Check. Yeah. Now look. Make sure it's on. It's yeah. on. Look, don't do anything perverted with this, okay? But look. You think you have dealt with your trigger point? You have no idea what this is all about. So look, Kelly Starrett, and Nemesis is this rectus femoris. This is what we're talking about. When we talk about obsession, we mean obsession. Brian saw this, thought about this. Hey, he's like, I can do a better job. Look at this. Oh, God! You can't even hear yourself vomit! That is horrible. Look, I'm not recommending that you do this. I'm not even. Yes, you should. I'm not, not even saying that. <laughs> no, no, this we're is not. This legal in California or Alabama, 
But I'm definitely saying that this is a, an idea that's worth, worth its weight. And look, we're talking about ungluing those tissues in the heel, right? You can smash this in that delicate bit right here. Bam, right, that posterior tear. Oh, God! I don't know how much of this is good for you, honestly, but uh, 20 or 30 seconds is not going to hurt you. And if you bleed out somewhere, I mean, don't hit your carotid. Don't mobilize your eyes. But, uh, dude, I mean, you might just shear your heart off, and it's worth it. All right, so we'll... Oh, it unplugged. Thank God. I pulled it up. Look, <laughs> obsess over this stuff because performance is always there to be had. Barbells for boobs. I'm asking you to go on and donate. Be great. We'll see you guys tomorrow.